Hello, this is Mr. White, and today we're going to study the double angle identities. Okay, that was my best British accent by request. I'm not going to be able to keep that up the whole video, thankfully. Let's move forward. Uh, if everything has gone according to my current plan, we've previewed this in class, discussed it a little bit, so it won't seem brand new here, but it is worth a recap of where our double angle identities come from. Well, they come from the sine of a sum or difference formulas, as well as the cosine sum of a difference formula as well. And remember that if you take all the A, wherever you see A in this formula, if you replace that with, a, let's just say, theta, and again, if I place it, replace it one place, I gotta replace it everywhere. And if I replace all the Bs, and I say, you know what, I'm gonna replace those with theta as well, I end up with something that should still be a true statement, right? But this time we can consolidate it. That is just sine of two theta. And over here, by making a and b both equal to theta, you've got like terms here, and that is just two sine theta, cosine theta. So that was our first double angle identity. And again, I really just want to emphasize its relationship that it was born out of the sum or difference formulas. And same with the cosine version as well. If we do the same thing and replace all the a's with theta and all the b's with theta as well, we get the cosine version. But this one has several different uh, um, variations to it. So we get the cosine of 2 theta on this side. And on the, on the right side, we get cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And that is one valid uh, um, variation of this formula, but we also can use our Pythagorean identities and say I'm going to replace I'm going to replace the sine squared with parentheses one minus cosine squared, and again that is via our Pythagorean identities. And if I distribute the negative sign here, that would end up giving, and then combine like terms, that would give me two cosine squared of theta minus 1. Again, I'm, I'm hoping that we've gone through this in class, so this is just a, a, a recap that's worth seeing again um, real quickly. And, and likewise, if I had taken this original variation, and instead of replacing the sine squared with a 1 minus cosine squared, what if I replace that cosine squared with a 1 minus sine squared of theta? That's Pythagorean identity. And then we subtract that, that sine squared there. And that would have given us our third variation, 1 minus 2 sine squared of theta. So three variations of this double angle identity for cosine. And again, all three of them are valid. And you have to look at the context of the problem to decide which of these three you want to use. So here they are summarized the double angle identities. Uh, the tangent one, I know I didn't address. I, I would consider it the lesser of the, of the three. So I'm going to focus on the sine and cosine double angle identities. All right, rather than do a full example of this, I just want to comment real quickly, and, and again, maybe we've discussed this in class already, that we can prove, or, or at least demonstrate, that these um, identities hold true for some angles that we already know. Um, we already know that 90 degrees is double 45 degrees. So notice that that fits the mold of this equation. And we could just do the trig real quickly, use our unit circle knowledge. And we could demonstrate very easily that sine of 90 degrees, according to the double angle identity, does equal 1. And we, we know that's true. We know sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So we're, we're just demonstrating that these identities um, hold true for angles that we already know. Um, likewise, cosine of pi over 3. This one, you, know, you have to a little, be a little swifter with your fractions and know that pi over 3 is double pi over 6. Hopefully that's not a shocker there. But notice that that fits the form of this first version of the cosine double angle identity. And again, if you plug in your unit circle values that you know if you, for, for pi over 6, and then you simplify the, the, the arithmetic there, 
you get one half. And you say, wow, that works because I know that cosine of pi over 3 is one half. So the value of these formulas is not just doing problems like this. But it is you know, worth just trying it out and saying, yeah, it appears to be true. So let's see what, where we're actually going to use them, um, what kind of situations we're going to use them in. Well, we're going to use them for solving equations. So in this first example, we will solve on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And here's our equation. And the need for the double angle identities is because uh, um, sine and cosine, we, we've dealt with equations involving sine and cosine and the other trig functions of x. But sine of 2x doesn't play well with these trig functions of just x. So again, trig functions of 2x do not mix well with so trig functions of just x. We would really want to get these, our, our first priority with this kind of equation, don't think of anything else other than saying, I want to get rid of that 2x. And that's where we use our double angle identity. So the double angle identity for sine says that sine of 2x would equal 2 sine x cosine x. Again, that's just the formula that we were, have been looking at. So multiply that times sine of x. Set it equal to cosine of x. And notice that at least now, even though it's a little bit messier, at least we only have x's here. And I'm really emphasizing that because for whatever reason, this is something that a lot of students have failed to grasp in previous years. You first priority is get, get rid of that 2x and make everything in terms of x. Now, let's proceed with some of our usual tactics. I see a sine of x here, and it's being multiplied times a sine of x here, as well as a cosine of x. So that all becomes 2 sine squared of x times cosine of x. And in the same step, I'm going to move this cosine of x. I'm going to bring it over to the left side. I need to remind you, please do not divide out this cosine from both sides. Um, as we should have discussed in class, that would lose some of your solutions if you were to try to divide it out. What we want to do instead of dividing out is bring it over to the left-hand side and then factor it out. So we're not just getting rid of it by dividing it out. We're factoring it out and still keeping tabs on it. Hmm. I just noticed something. This looks an awful lot very similar to one of our double angle identities for cosine. And I'm not going to go that route, but it's going in my, through my head here. We could do something with that if we wanted to. But let me not confuse things any further. Um, if you're looking at this part and saying, could I factor that any further? Well, if this 2 weren't here, yeah, that's a, a difference of squares. We could do sine of x plus 1, sine of x minus 1. But that 2 is there, and we're going to have to deal with it. So here's what we do instead. I'm not going to try to factor this any further. I'm simply going to set each of these factors that I do have equal to 0. And I'll just do a little bit more work on this uh, second factor. Um, on this one, I'll bring the 1 over, and I'll divide by 2. And I hope it's clear that I would get sine squared of x equals positive 1 half. And when I take the square root of both sides, I would put sine of x, or let me put it this way, a lot of students would put 1 over square root of 2. Notice I could have said square root of 1 over square root of 2, but don't really need to. But do you see what I've missed here? I've made a little bit of a mistake or an, an omission. And remember, when you're the one who introduces the square root sign, you've got to do the plus or minus. So that's what I was missing. All right. Um, so let me scroll down here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to, you know, rather than do these two separately, let's just do one unit circle plane and just capture all of these solutions. So where does cosine of x equal 0? Well, that's right here and right here at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And again, just relying on our awesome unit circle skills. And where does sine of x equal plus or minus 1 over root 2? Well, that really gives me all four of these middle special triangles, right? Or special angles. So that's pi over 4. That's 3 pi over 4. That's uh, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. 
So uh, what I would write on my paper is uh, I would write x equals, this is our solution, x equals pi over 4. And I'm just going to go around um, counterclockwise here. pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and so on. Uh, we still need to check this. And I am implore once again, please make sure you're doing this. Not only do we need to look out for extraneous solutions, but we just want to look out for errors and make sure we got this correct as well. So barely fit that on the screen. That is our solution. And in checking it, and I would go back to the original equation and do y1 for the left side and y2 for the right side. And I've already done that. And let me just bring it out here onto the screen. And let me point out that those six solutions do correspond to those six intersection points. So I could use trace and verify that that pi over 4 corresponds to that x value, pi over 2 to that x value, and so on. So these would all be considered checked and problem solved. All right, let's do one more here. Solve on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, I'm looking at this one and saying, OK, I see a cosine double angle. And this is where I have a choice to make. Because remember, there's three different versions of it. And here's how we decide which one. I look at what else is involved in this equation. So in addition to this cosine of 2x, I've got just a cosine of regular old x. So I look at my three options here, and I would prefer to choose the one that involves only cosines. So just to extend this a bit, if this had been a sine instead, if that had been sine of x, I would probably I would use this one. That's the one that uses only sines. However, since it uses only cosines, or since cosine of x is the, the function present in this equation, let's use this one. That involves only cosines. OK, so need to remember the parentheses. So I'm going to replace cosine of 2x with 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. And I remember the parentheses, put the 7 on the outside plus cosine of x plus 4. And I apologize if it seems like I'm rushing and trying to keep this from going on too long. And I'm hoping the algebra is starting to become, become pretty comfortable. So hopefully we, we've taken our time on the parts that we need to. And let's go through the algebra a little bit more quickly than, than we have in the past. Let's make this 14 cosine squared of x minus 7. Don't forget you're distributing. This is multiplication. Uh, combine my like terms and put it in our familiar quadratic standard form, our familiar order of the squared, the quadratic term first, followed by the linear term, just cosine of x here. And minus 7 plus 4, that's the same as minus 3. As always, pause if you need to, if, uh, if I've lost you, if I'm going a little too fast. Uh, here I'll factor this, and that's a little bit of an ugly one to factor, but um, I probably mentioned to you that most of the quadratics that you come up with in this class, or calculus for that matter, are going to be easily factorable. So this one, let's see, that's going to be a 3 here, right? And a 1 here, and that's going to be plus and then a minus. Let me just mentally check that real quickly. Yes, that looks good. OK. So oh, boy, I made a mistake, didn't I? Do you see it? I put cosine squared there. I'm sure somebody was watching that video wondering how long I was going to let that go. All right, this one's going to give me cosine of x equals 3 sevenths. This one here is going to give me cosine of x equals negative 1 half. And once again, I'm going to just do this all on one picture. Typically in class, I, I might draw two different unit circles. But I'd rather just do these all on one plane this time. Um, Let's do the easier one first, the one that involves our special ratios. So negative 1 half, that would be this one. And this one, that would be um, 2 pi over 3. And then 4 pi over 3. But let's look at this one. That's not special. 
cosine of x equals 3 7 but I could draw a picture of it where I say, OK, it's going to be in the first quadrant. And again, if I draw the rest of the triangle, it's 3, 7, and who cares over here, right? Um, so whatever that angle is, well, it's not a special angle. So we're going to say that that is the inverse cosine of 3 7. And we know that would land us in the first quadrant. So again, this angle right here, inverse cosine of 3 7. Um, the last one that I want is this one down here. Now, I could look at that, and, and we've done things like this in class recently. I could look at that as negative cosine, inverse cosine of 3 7. But do you remember what's wrong with that when we look back at what we're being asked for? Remember that interval? This has to be positive. So how do we make it positive? Well, after going down, you go around, back around in the positive direction of full turn. That's what gives you a positive angle. So rather than rewrite these, I think I'm going to be a little bit lazy here, and I'll just put x equals, x equals, x equals, x equals, and I'll just put boxes around them individually. Um, and even though I'm letting myself be lazy in that respect, I'm not going to be too lazy to check. I encourage you not to also. So if I look at those, three solu or those four solutions, and then I... Um, bring my um, graph onto the screen. It's getting awfully crowded here, but hopefully you see, you see the idea here is that four solutions, and again, I, I could use trace and verify that those four highlighted points, those four intersections with the x-axis represent those four angles. All right, your turn to try. You know the drill. Pause the video and see how you do. OK, time to so show the solutions. Here's the solution to the first one. That one should have had three solutions. And I've kind of worked it all out for you there. So if you want to pause and compare notes or compare your work, feel free. Those three solutions, check them against the graph. And yes, I see three intersection points. And uh, let me point out that even though I'm not as interested in seeing the decimal approximations on a test or on your homework, the decimal approximations are useful for comparing on the calculator. All right, and the, um, the second one for you to try, again, worked out. We see four solutions there. And pause if you need to, but I'm going to scroll down here and compare. Yes, it checks out. Once again, the four decimal approximations do match the four decimal approximations here. All right, hope that all went well. Tally ho!